Welcome to Cross Generation Full Gospel Church. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. May you be blessed. Feel free to share this message to all your social media platforms. Host the watch party and spread the gospel. We are better together. If you are not part of the E family yet, send us an email or a message and we will connect with you as soon as possible. Trust you enjoy the fellowship with us. Blessings. So we exalt, lift up on high the name.
Father, we can only imagine how awesome you are, Father. Nothing we can say or explain can put you inside of a box, Father. But your worthiness and holiness is above all else, above all minds, above all anything on this planet and in this universe, Father, you are perfect, Father. And we worship you for that, Lord. Because, Father, the, the air that we breathe it's the breath that you gave us. Yes, we worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me, and I, I'm desperate for without you this is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very word spoken
privilege father if we can say that we want to yearn for you well the, the word yearn literally means a desperate need or longing for something or someone and father we have that desperate longing for you we have that desperate longing for your presence and for your love in our lives father i pray that you will bless every person here this morning everyone that's watching right now has tuned into this worship Worship music, Father, as you will bless them. And Father, we also will know in our hearts, in our minds, that we worship a living and powerful God. And that it's time for the body of Christ to come together again to worship you under one roof. To be part of the fellowship. And to be part of a bigger picture that is the body of Christ. I pray this all in your wonderful and mighty name, Father. Amen. Take our seats. Thank you, church. Praise God. Can we give God a hand this morning? Also say thank you to all the musicians. It's such a privilege to be in a place of worship. Such a privilege. And I hope that one of these days, all of our faith family will be together again. So that we can worship together and praise together. The King of Kings. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all of my and our offerings this morning. God is good. And all the time, God is good. So we, as a denomination, is really um, all over South Africa, really in a place where we say thank you to the Bible Society. And uh, this morning, I'm also going to minister just a bit on that, on the Word. And uh, so while we're busy with this and uh, getting ready for our service, please check out the Bible Society. Um, thank you for each and everyone that's sowing into the Bible Society so that we are still currently in process of getting the Word of God out there, the physical Word of God, like what you and me, what we have in our hands, that we can spread it in this way. And we want to thank them also this morning for the wonderful work that they are doing. And in a, in a while, we're all going to stand together and pray for the Bible Society as well. We all know that as Christians, we will be challenged in our own faith. You'll be challenged. 
Sometimes the challenge comes in the form of temptation. And the enemy knows exactly when to target us. When we're at our weakest. And he knows precisely what tempts us most. If you can't say amen, say ouch. He knows what tempts us most. And often the challenge comes when the world is in disarray when the world way in a counter cultural to God's way and we want to be accepted we want to be in the in crowds and it's difficult to always say or do the right thing as a child of God and of course we are challenged when we face trials that cut us to the bone like grief, loss, sickness, disappointment. Are you here, church? That can all lead us to wave our beliefs. But there are three ways this morning that I want to minister on. Three ways to stand firm in your faith. Are you ready? Three ways to stand firm in your faith. Do you want to stand firm in your faith? All right. So the first one is we have to know upon what we are standing. Thank you for each and everyone writing this down. We have to know upon what we are standing. And I want to read to you in Psalm 40, verse 1 and 2. In the Afrikaans, it's verse 3. I don't know why. Ask the Bible Society. Psalm 40. So, I, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy, slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet upon a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Isaiah 7 verse 9, the B part in the NIV, says, If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. So when we face with challenges to our faith, how does the Bible encourage us to stand firm? We need to stand on the Word of God. And we need to stand on Jesus Christ who is our rock. When God reached down and saved us, He lifted us out of the pit and set us on the rock. And John 14 verse 6, 17 verse 7 is very clear. So the brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word or mouth or by letter. He has letters to churches in you. It's the Word of God. 2 Thessalonians um, 2 verse 15. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word or mouth or by letter. Isaiah 40 verse 8. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of God stands forever. Can we just say hallelujah? The Word of God stands forever. And that's why I'm so thankful for a place like the Bible Society of South Africa. And I'm going to ask Pastor Rudy to be ready to read to us a prayer this morning. That all of the churches over South Africa will be praying. Can we stand together and pray this together as a faith family? Thank you, Pastor. Let's close our eyes. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for 200 years of Bible society work in South Africa. We thank you for your gracious provision. We thank you for your fruitful collaboration between the churches and Bible society. We thank you for the many translations that have been completed and the many millions of Bibles that have enabled countless numbers of people to understand your word. We thank you for all who have worked faithfully and for those who still labor faithfully, 
to accomplish this task. We thank you for all those who have generously supported the work in the past and for those who still do. Guide and bless the work of Bible Society, Lord, in, in South Africa and throughout the United Bible Society's fellowship so that all the people of our land and all the people of the earth may hear you speaking to them in their own heart's language. Strengthen all those involved in Bible Society and ministry so that the light of your word may shine to the furthest reaches of the earth and into the darkest corners of our world. Help us to bring an end to Bible poverty. Bless our two million Bibles project, we pray, Father. May your word be a lamp into our feet, onto our feet and a light onto our path and a beacon of hope for all. May this year in which we celebrate 200 years of Bible society work in our beloved land truly be a year of the Bible, a year in which your word is held high and your name glorified. To Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So when our faith is challenged, remember that you stand on the rock, Jesus Christ. He's our rock. He's our foundation. He, his word is a firm place to stand. He does not change. He's each and every day the same. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he'll be the same tomorrow and forever. You can read that in Hebrews 13 verse 8. So what we need to do is we need to dig our heels in and trust the one who is beneath us. So I don't know about you, but um, I was busy uh, preparing this sermon throughout the week, and, and uh, I wanted to minister on this, and I want to use an example of, of and we've got this Afrikaans thing, say, toad track. So I can't even what is toad track, so I must have Google. I had to Google what is toad track. So it's tug of war. Is it new for somebody? Tug of war. Thank you, my brother. Or is it just me? Thank you. But tug of war, tug of war means tow track. So when I speak of tug of war, we will all know what it is. All right. So I don't know about you, but, but it was a big sport when I was in school. And wherever we, 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 we will go, we will always somewhere during our camp as a faith family with the youth or whomever, we will always have at least a tug of war competition. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here to tell you um, it's not as easy. It's not about just strength. It's not about just grabbing that rope and, and say pull, pull, pull. It's not just about that. It's about having the right people in the right place with the right strategy and a lot of brain power. I remember once we went with the youth and uh, there were about 50 of them. And we were only about 18 or 19 adult men there. And they said they wanted to have a competition, tug of war competition against us. So we said, oh man, you know how we are, men. We said to the youth, you can bring all of you. All of you can come. And only the 17 of us will stand there. And then two of them said, listen, I've got back pain. So at the end, we were only 13. But still I said, because we have faith in our strength as adults, as men, big egos, amen. I said, bring it on, all of you, against the 13 of us. But first of all, you have to all run to your rooms and learn one scripture out of your head. And if you don't know one scripture out of your head, there will be no competition. One, two, and they were all running to their rooms. And I put the rope there, and I also took the hose pipe, the garden hose. And when, where they are supposed to stand, I made sure that it's very slippery there. 
And the moment we started to pull, I said to the guys, listen, they are going to give everything that they have. Within the first minute, within the first couple of seconds, they're going to give everything they have. So all we need to do is we have to stand firm. In Afrikaans is it not on hang, hang. So you put your heels in the, in the ground and you just hang backwards and you just hold them. All together, just hold them. And after 40 to 45 minutes, we saw that they are getting tired. So we started with small movements. The right strategy. Pull, pull, pull. One, two, and all faster. You've heard that before. Go and watch a couple of movies on YouTube on tug of war. You will see that. And they were, they were because it's slippery, they were all over the place. The rope went left and right. And, and some of them fell. And the moment they fell, they lost momentum. And we just pulled them over to our side. So we won. But you know, the youth are very clever. Especially youth pastors. So they said, best out of three. Now, let's change. <laughs> All right, I don't have to tell you what happened then. We complained and we said, no, we are old. We can only do it once. Why am I telling this? Because it's important that we realize that sometimes it's just very, very important to stand firm, dig your heels in and trust the one who is beneath you. He's not slippery. He's not shaking. He's not moving. He's a firm foundation. Jesus Christ is our firm foundation on which we can stand and trust. Secondly, we will have to resist the devil and his lies. When we are struggling with our faith, Satan will whisper words contrary to God's word. We have to choose the cause, to cast down those thoughts according to 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Now I want to read you a scripture in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 and 9. Say, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devils, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, devour, sorry, devour, resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know that your brother throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. There's a big tug of war going on currently in our country and throughout the world. Stand Strong, be strong, stand firm. All over the scriptures this morning we read, stand firm, be on the right, right foundation. And as soon as we recognize thoughts of fear, as soon as we recognize thoughts of discouragement, or thoughts of anxiety, or thoughts of temptation, we have to choose. Guard your minds. Resist the devil and his lies. Guard your mind against the deception of the enemy. Guard your mind and choose to think God's thoughts instead of believing the lies. It's a very, very old trick. He used it in Genesis already with Eve in the beginning. He used it. You shall surely not die. Did God say? God has given us spiritual armor to help us to stand firm. When we feel the challenge to our faith, we can remember to suit up and then take our stand. And whether it's tug of war, in this spiritual warfare we are currently in, he has given us everything. Ephesians 6 verse 13 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, 
you may be able to stand your ground. It's a tug of war. That you'll be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. I just, I just like this part of Scripture in Ephesians 6 verse 13. And after you have done everything to stand. After you have done everything. In other words, we have to do our part. We can't just say, all right, Lord, here I am. You're whatever, you know, take the steering wheel. You have to do your part. We have to put on the armor and actively choose to protect our minds from wrong thoughts, our hearts from pride, our gut from lies. Then we have to take up our shield of faith glory we have to be self-controlled and alert and on God at all times but when we have done our part God will enable us to stand firm when we do our part God God will never ever leave us, nor will He forsake us. It's His Word. He promised us in His Word. We will always be able to stand firm on the rock of our salvation. In tug of war, there's also the right shoes. If you don't have the right shoes on, slippery shoes, you will not stand firm. And you know, there's something that I've learned from tug of war. It's that there's, there's really teamwork. If one slips up, it's bad for the whole team. If you need to pull on one, and half of the guys are pulling on one and the rest are just hanging in there, we are losing momentum. There is strength in unity. There is power in unity. And the moment we work together, we are better together. And that's why as a faith family and as Christians all over the world, we must stand together, pray together, and proclaim God's word together. So it's very important to realize this morning that we are better together and that we must help each other, but also that we must be sensitive to hear Holy Spirit this morning leading us and guiding us on our path. Don't forget that. Be sensitive. All right. So we already finished with two. Are you ready for the third one? Number one, first, we have to know upon what we are standing. Secondly, we will have to resist the devil and his lies. Thirdly, are you ready? We can't waver between faith and doubt. We can't waver between faith, now I'm believing, and I'm not sure anymore. And you see it all over the world that, that people ask questions, why? That's, that's questions of doubt. I do not understand. It's because they are so under the influence of the lies of the enemy already, and he he has this one trick and he's using it in different ways over and over and over again to sow doubt in Christians' lives, in your life. Many a time he has sent doubt. Can somebody say, yes, I know that. Doubt, I've dealt with it before. We can't waver between faith and doubt. In tug of war, you must be in a place where you can believe and trust in your team. And I want to say we've got the best team captain in the world. We can trust him. He's not a God that he can or will lie. His word is steadfast and everlasting. But we have to know what we believe and why we believe so that when the challenges come, we can firm and stand firm in our faith. We need to ask a few questions this morning. Why did you decide to follow Jesus?
And when I ask these questions in the counseling room, then I get strange answers. Why did you decide to follow Jesus? Why do you choose to serve Him? What do you believe about God? And what do you believe about God's Word? Do you believe that it's the only truth? Do you believe that the rock that you are standing on is the only door, the only truth, the only way? There is no other way. What do you believe about God and His Word? Well, Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, follow Him. When God reached down and saved us, He lifted us out of the pit and set us on the rock. Jesus Christ is the rock. Jesus Christ is the answer. When He took you out of that pit, He put you on the steadfast rock, Jesus Christ. And He is a firm place to stand. He is the truth. He is the word of truth. He is the light. You can read John 14 verse 6 and John 17 verse 7. Read it again and again and again. There is no where else. So Elijah in 1 Kings 18 verse 21 ask these questions if God is God follow him but if Baal is God follow him I think sometimes we struggle we waver between waiting to follow God and wanting to follow the world and if that is the case we will definitely struggle with our faith Wanting to follow God and wanting to follow the world. And I've seen it many times that with our words we say, I will follow Christ. But with our deeds I can see they're following the world. And that is why Elijah is actually very angry here in 1 Kings 18 verse 21. If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, follow Him. Stop wasting our time. Choose. Make a decision. Who do you want to follow? Maybe there are some of us wavering between am I fully committed to serving God? Or am I life showing something totally different? And if you know that God is good and God is good, there is no question. Don't let the devil make you think Satan has something better to offer you in this world. This world is not my own. It's a lie. This is just a temporary place for us. Only God is God and He alone knows what is best for you and me. What is best for us. Only God knows that. He alone is the path to life. He alone is the path to love. The enemy came and said, there's a different path to life. There's a different way of love. I want to come and say this morning, I want to proclaim it. There is only one life. There is only one love. And there is only one victory. And that victory is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There is nothing else. No one else. Let's consider Abram and his faith. He was a man, a real person. A normal guy like you and me. Like us. And God gave Abram this wonderful, great promise. With no evidence that Abram can actually see the promise. There was no evidence. Actually, Abram looked at himself and thought, really Lord <laughs> and then the most funny thing is he looked at his wife <laughs> really, Lord. 
Really, Lord? There is no evidence. I want to make it clear this morning, church, no matter how it looks around you, no matter how you feel, when there's a promise over your life, God will come through with His promise. The promise of God will stand firm. Hold on to your promise. Romans 4 verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. It's Abram. But was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Is there promises in the house this morning? Let's cut off the unbelief. Let's get rid of the unbelief. Let's stand firm in faith on the promises of God. Abram made mistakes. He wasn't perfect. But he was fully persuaded for God. We are all human. We all make mistakes. But the final question for you this morning is, are you fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded today that God is able to do what He has promised? Well, I want to stand firm this morning and say there is a lot of promises I'm waiting for. And in faith this morning, I'm standing and say, here I am, Lord. I'm able to stand not because I am a super being or cool or because I'm the pastor. I am able to stand because the rock that I'm standing on is firm. And the word of God is yes and amen. I can stand because this morning I am fully persuaded that God will come through. Not me. Are there some of us here this morning? We're going to end off now that wants to stand with me and say, I've been in a position where I've listened to the enemy. Where I've listened to the enemy's lies. So stand firm, beloved. Need someone help standing firm this morning? Just stand with me. Trust God this morning for His word. Father God, thank you for each and every one of us standing right now where they are. Father, I'm just currently thinking of the Barberton Recovery Center that are live streaming with us, us this morning. Every Sunday they are live streaming with us. Thank you for that ministry, Father. And I want to pray for them, Father, that there will be decisions this morning to stand firm in Jesus' name. In every campus, Lord, in Nelspreit, Mullalon, Barberton, where people are listening, let this be a word that will change their hearts, that will encourage them and give them strength to, to realize that even though they are not perfect that they can stand firm on your word Father I pray this morning that your word will come and set us free that your word this morning will come and deliver us that your word will always be on our lips I pray that in Jesus wonderful name Amen and amen. Thank you, faith family. You may be seated.